Brought to you by Matt with Sir Lester. There are three questions for this video and you are to answer them in 15 seconds each. Are you ready? In three, two, one. Let's have this function. First question. What is the vertex of the graph of the given function? The vertex is at 0 and negative 4. Next question. The concavity or the opening of the graph opens in which direction? The graph of the function opens upward. Last question. What is the maximum and the minimum values of the given function? The maximum value is infinity while the minimum value is negative 4. Did you get 3 over 3? If not, please continue viewing this video. The answers to the three questions earlier are interrelated, especially the last question with regards to the maximum and the minimum values of a function. The answers for the first two questions about the vertex and the concavity will actually help us determine the minimum and maximum values without even solving for it. Now, to answer the vertex, uh, and then the concavity and of course the maximum minimum values. Let's start by identifying the coefficients of this given quadratic function. Now, the coefficients a, b, and c also follows the pattern of the coefficients of quadratic equation. a is the coefficient of x squared. b is the coefficient of x and c is your constant. Now, here in this given function, a the coefficient of x squared is 1. b is the coefficient of x, but there is no x term here. That's why it's 0. The minus 4 is the constant here. But again, please don't forget to include the minus sign or the sub, uh, negative sign for our constant. Now with this, we can now determine the concavity and the vertex of this function. Now this function when plotted in our Cartesian plane, we can draw its parabolic graph. The graph of any quadratic function is a parabola. But aside from graphing it, there are also some important details that we could draw from the parabola. Hence, again, vertex, uh, concavity, and the minimum and maximum values with the use of this A, B, and C coefficients. We can start with the vertex. The vertex is of course a point in the Cartesian plane. This is called the vertex as this is the point of inflection or this is where the graph, the parabolic graph, changes its direction from either decreasing to increasing or increasing to decreasing. With the use of these coefficients here, we can solve the vertex in this manner. The vertex has x coefficient equal to negative b over 2 a and the y coefficient is 4 a c minus b squared over 4 a these are the coefficients that will i mean the formula using the coefficients that will tell us the value of our vertex but you don't need to worry about this here because once you will get the value of x for the vertex simply substitute the set value to our original function and you, whatever with the result that's your value here so let's start with the vertex the vertex of this function for the x coefficient the x is again negative b over 
2a. So you have here negative b over 2a. And we simply use the coefficients we identified earlier. a, uh, I mean b is 0. So you have negative 0 over 2 times a, which is 1. Of course, this will give us a result of x being equal to 0. This is the x coordinate of your vertex. Now, to complete the vertex as it is a point in the Cartesian plane, substitute this on our original function. We have here the function of x is equal to x squared minus 4. And if you are going to substitute 0, you will have here f of 0. The value of x becomes 0. So 0 squared minus 4. So the f of 0, which actually corresponds to your y coordinate, is 0 squared minus 4. We have negative 4. Therefore, our vertex here is given to be our x being 0 and its y coordinate which is negative 4. Now, this should be the point in the Cartesian plane where the graph changes its direction. Okay? From either again decreasing to increasing or increasing to decreasing, it depends on the second item we're going to discuss for this video which is on concavity. The concavity talks about where does the opening of the parabolic graph faces. Okay? The parabolic graph could look like this. Uh, so if we have here the Cartesian plane, the parabolic graph could look like this. It opens upward or here it opens downward. But take note that if we're going to plot this on our Cartesian plane, zero, and then you have one, two, three, four. You have here your negative four. This is the point where the graph changes its direction. Either it goes down until this vertex and it goes up. Or it goes up here until you reach this vertex, it goes down. So this is the point of inflection or your vertex. Again, zero and negative four. For the concavity, it's either facing up or facing downward. Okay? Now, even without plotting the rest of the points that will make the parabolic graph like this, because in a parabola, you need at least five points. Your centermost point is your vertex. You need the point here, 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 and there. But with, even without completing the five points, you can identify the direction of the graph by the value of your a coefficient. So simply look at this. This is already the analysis. You don't even need to solve for this. Simply look at the value of your a. Okay? If your a is greater than 0, or in short, it is positive, your graph opens upward. But if your a coefficient is less than 0, or in short, it's negative, the graph should open downward with both of this here and here to be your vertex or your point of inflection. Of course, we can never get A which is equal to 0. Why? Because if A equals 0, that would mean our function is not a quadratic function. It's only a linear function and hence, we don't have these specifications. We don't use vertex for that because the graph is a line. So we only have two instances. And look at your value of your A. It's positive 1. So it is greater than 0. And therefore, your graph should open upward. Now, I'm just going to draw a representative of the graph without plotting the rest of the points. But basically, your graph will have it here and it goes there. It might not be the perfect graph, but it will look like this. Okay? So your graph opens upward. This is why the answer earlier to the second question, it opens upward. So I already discussed the first two answers. Number one, again, the vertex is here. And here, it opens upward. For the last question with regards to our minimum and maximum values, if you have these two ideas already, you can immediately describe 
or give the value for your maximum and your minimum values. Now, the maximum and minimum values of a quadratic function describes about the movement of your y-axis. Take note, this is your y-axis or also known as your f of x. Okay? The value of your function. Now, look at this graph. Your graph started here because it opens upward. It goes in both directions. In relation to the y-axis, your graph moves here but it stops at the specific point and again it moves it goes back it goes up right because it, 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 it is here look at this one it goes down here once you reach this point it goes up again there this means that in the context of your y-axis okay your value for y uh, increases to the top but it ends here what is the point because this is only for the minimum and maximum values which, which pertains to the y look at the y value of the vertex okay the y value of the vertex is the point here where it stops going down and it moves going up now and since it moves upward hear this whenever your graph is opening upward your maximum is always the positive infinity because this still extends further extends further as you will input additional values for x here and this side here as well it will still increase without bound therefore your maximum value is infinity but your minimum value is here this is the minimum value for your y it doesn't reach here it just stops at this point, which is your vertex, as we call earlier the point of inflection, and then it goes up again. So what is the value of y at this point? Look at your vertex. Your minimum value is negative 4. So with this here, your vertex and concavity will give us the idea for your maximum and minimum values. Your concavity... We'll talk about whether this point, your vertex, is the lowest point. Or if it, it goes like this, your vertex is your highest point. We might have a different video for that. If it goes upward, the value of y in your vertex is the minimum. And the maximum value extends forward, upward rather, because again, it goes without bound. This is why these three ideas are interrelated. The vertex, the concavity, and the maximum minimum values are interrelated because these values here can be declared by your concavity and your y coordinate of your vertex, which anchored from this formula. This is the answer for this. Subscribe now!